I land here in New York, gone to my hotel room. I lie down, sleeping, studying what to tell all you here in this auditorium. That's our worries, eh? <laughs> we just have a little stress too, you know. But we just try to take care of it. And with that in my mind, I fall asleep. Fall asleep, Papa, I dream I dead. <laughs> Strange thing to happen to a fella like me. Not long after I dead, Papa, I gone up heaven, because I feel that is the place I had to go. <laughs> and if you see your boy cutting style going up. <laughs> when I reach St. Peter interviewing two fellas, I say, a cool man. He can't get, them two fellas can't get St. Peter vexed so quick. St. Peter take out the notebook, he say, who are you? First fellow, I'm from the United States of America. St. Peter say, America, America, down below for you. <laughs> well. Next fellow, and who are you? I'm a Russian. Russia, Russia, Russia. Down below for you. <laughs> I say, Trini, you're dead. <laughs> you have a chance. St. Peter say, who are you? I say, St. Peter, I, I, I'm a Trini. He say, come right in, man. You've been through hell already. <laughs> no. We're going to start a talk. I reach here, Harold, Harold, come sir. We were here today doing sound tests, is that right? Uh -huh. Okay, that's all, I don't want people to believe I'm lying. Thank you very much for the information. <laughs> Harold and we doing sound tests here today. In the corner of my eye, I noticing Harold have on a bra. <laughs> I don't want to tell him about it, I feel in shame. As man, and you are a man, and you, I mean, if you see me wearing a bra, you will think twice. So this thing worrying me, he do anything and I watching him in the corner of me, I, I get in suspicious. I said, no, man for man, he can't do me nothing, I could ask him. I say, Harold, you, you does always wear a bra? He say, Aji, you come here to do business, do your damn business and get out. I know your mouth, you know. I say, no man, all of us are men. You does always wear a bra? He say, I go tell you the truth, but don't tell nobody, eh? My wife find it in the car this morning, I tell she's my own. <laughs> now there's a lot of controversy in this country about sex scandal in the White House. All of us read that. You're a big woman, aren't you? Are you a big woman? <laughs> Suppose you and I have an agreement to have sex. Would that be a scandal? No. Exactly. <laughs> but if I pay you enough money, it's going to be a scandal. <laughs> well, was with this in mind, you know, the New York Times sent some journalists. Are you all journalists? Well, does lie too damn much. <laughs> the New York Times sent some journalists to make a survey to find out exactly what's going on in the White House with this sex scandal. They interviewed 100 women individually. What I'm telling you here, ain't no joke. They asked each one individually, would you have sex with Bill Clinton. 60 of them say not again. <laughs> now 
I going home one day after work? I'm not telling you here, no joke. It have one rum shop in my village. When we reach there, them boys drinking. I hear him from inside the rum shop. Aji, come, come, come. I say, what happened? Come now, man, come. Bah, man, two beers, please. Say, Aji, take a beer. I say, no, I'm going to take a Coke. Okay, not the drug, eh? Coca Cola. I say, I'll take a Coca Cola. Okay. I say, what is the problem? He said, boy, how long you see me? I said, must be about three months. He was in jail or what? He said, no, boy, pressure, boy. Pressure. I said, what kind of pressure you could have? He said, boy, a neighbor moving by me from the time the man moving by me. I have not pressure. I said, explain what kind of pressure your neighbor giving you. He said, boy, the first week she come there to live. The husband buy a new washing machine for she. Doris gone and see that washing machine. She want one like that. <laughs> it's 18 hours a day your boy put in. That's why he wasn't seeing me, boy. I sweat it out. I get the washing machine for Doris. Last week, the neighbor buy a VCR and a TV for his wife. Doris gone there, she see that. She won one like that. Boy, if I didn't like, love my wife, I leave she. You see, I gone down again 18 hours a day. I sweat it out, Aji. I sweat it out. I buy the VCR and the TV for Doris. Bam on two more beers, please. I say, he said, I'm celebrating. I say, what are you celebrating now? <laughs> he said, I'm celebrating now. <laughs> Bye, man. Two cold beers. You take an ex-coke, John. I said, no, hold your hand. I still sip in mine. I said, what are you celebrating? Yesterday, the husband gave wife a divorce. I want Doris to ask me for one like that. Now, all you listen to this carefully. <laughs> if all you give me the chorus, it will sound exactly like what I was hearing the other night. All I want you to say is hallelujah. Let me hear it. Hallelujah. Right. I coming up home in the junction, a wayside preacher preaching. And that was the chorus the congregation was giving him. I will give the words and you will say hallelujah, right? And we're going to hear exactly what he was saying. My friends, the Lord created the universe and he rested. Hallelujah. Then the Lord created man and he rested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, the Lord created woman. From then on, neither the Lord nor man has rested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what I was hearing. <laughs> no afraid to clap, that is true. <laughs> I want to tell you, I personally believe again that the good Lord made a man to give man problems. <laughs> I know all your men, I know all your men are going to like me for that, but I have nothing against you. It's just observation I make and I pass it on to my friends. What is it, partner? <laughs> I'm sure by the time you get home, he will solve your problem too. <laughs> if by now the problem has start stirring up already. Yes! I reach home from work, sit down with my wife to have dinner. Well, two slices of bread with butter, but say what? <laughs> is dinner? During dinner, this woman posed a question to me, Papa. Now all you big people hear what she telling me. How she do it? I said, mm. <laughs> Suppose you come home one day and meet me in bed with one of your best friends. What you will say? <laughs> Partner, any stand for Lego left? <laughs> eh? 
Well, is the same thing happened to me I get hot one time. I say, Haji, let go left. <laughs> but I'm watching the woman's face so pretty, I didn't want to spoil it. <laughs> so something tell me, think. Think, Haji. I say, do you repeat the question? Let me hear you. <laughs> Suppose you come home one day and meet me in bed with one of your best friends. What you will see? I start to laugh. <laughs> she said, what are you laughing at? I said, I go say you're a lesbian. <laughs> Now, I want all of you to know something that happened in, well, it happened all over the world, but it happened also in my village. Last June, the United Nations declared a day in June as a day for the families. All you remember that? You do? <laughs> and you still go out with people who are not your family? That's your deputy, and no, that's a daughter. Your husband gone out with somebody else. <laughs> I would understand that. Having a big daughter, so you can't make love in the house. <laughs> you have to go outside. <laughs> See, that's a problem we all have. Well, this is why the United Nations declare a day in June, I think it was the 19th of June, a day for the families. And our Parent Teachers Association, we have a PTA in we village, we well organized, you know, Papa. <laughs> we are very well constituted in we community. We have a little bit of everything. <laughs> yes. Yes, Papa. And hear what the PTA did they organize it so nicely? All the tickets were printed, Mr. and Mrs. You couldn't carry a deputy. <laughs> Hard to be Mrs. And beautiful music partner. This is a lovely way to spend an evening. Can't think of anything I'd rather do. Music like that. So I have to tell you the kind of evening we had. Husband and wives enjoying themselves. Three minutes to midnight, the chairman called attention. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your chairman speaking. On the stroke of midnight, I want every husband present here to stand close to the person who made their lives worthwhile. I repeat, <laughs> on the stroke of midnight, I want every husband present here to stand close to the person who made their lives worthwhile. You know they only crushed the barman to death. <laughs> Only women don't feel so important, you know. <laughs> Only when, when they reach in the house, all you could start the quarrel. But all day the barman is the boss. 